Hey you guys, so we are going to pick up where we left off, which is page 331. We are still going over facial treatments chapter eight, and we are continuing to work out of our standard aesthetics Lady book. Again, 331 at the top. Sensitive or sensitized skin or rosacea. Our skin, the largest organ in the human body, has a remarkable multifunctional capacity to not only maintain our internal environment, but to interact with environmental stimuli, such as microbes, chemicals, and other physical elements. Any of these environmental stimuli may evoke a reaction of the skin, leading to dermatitis and inflammation of the skin. In addition to redness, which is also known as erythema, edema, which is swelling, inflammation and dryness, that characteristics of dermatitis. Sensitive skin also experiences a, a cascade of free radical activities that causes skin destructive enzymes to form. These enzymes attack the skin's integrity, leading to premature aging in the form of wrinkles and loss of elasticity. As learned in chapter five, skin analysis, sensitive skin can be a biologic condition that readily reacts to a variety of factors, such as specific chemicals, airborne debris, and or certain skincare ingredients, resulting in skin that often appears blotchy, broken out, or excessively dry. Dry patches and redness are often present with the skin type. Skin can easily become red and warm to the touch. This skin type can be confused with rosacea or coporose skin. Sensitized skin can result from over aggressive exfoliation or from exposure to aggressive environmental factors such as cold, wind, low humidity, and of course, air pollution. This skin may become highly sensitive and needs to be treated as sensitive skin until it returns to its natural state. Avoid inflammatory ingredients until the skin has returned to its normal state. Irritants or sensitizing ingredients can be essential oils, again, exfoliants, fragrances, color agents, and preservatives. All of these may, may cause skin reactions and, of course, irritation. Rosacea. Estheticians cannot treat or diagnose any medical conditions and rosacea is considered a medical condition. This condition typically manifests as redness in the central area of the face, including on the cheeks and nose in a butterfly pattern. And it is characterized by flare-ups and remissions. Over time, the redness can become more persistently visible. Broken blood vessels can also become more apparent. Left untreated pustules and large inflamed nodules can result and are often misdiagnosed as acne. After a prolonged period, this condition can result in permanent enlargement of nasal tissue or rhinophema, where the tip of the nose becomes enlarged and red. Eyes can also become affected, appearing watery and bloodshot. This skin condition can be exacerbated by factors such as alcohol, spicy foods, and heat, making its symptoms similar to hypersensitive skin. While estheticians cannot treat rosacea, they must know how to properly provide a facial for a client with rosacea. More information on rosacea in this chapter four, Disorders and Diseases of skin. So caution, you guys, contraindications for sensitive or sensitized skin or rosacea. So the use of strong exfoliants such as coarse manual materials, microdermabrasions, aggressive AHA or BHA peels, vacuum suctions, the brush machine, and any ingredient with a pH of 3.5 or lower is not recommended for someone with, again, very sensitive, sensitized, or rosaceous skin. Also, steam during treatment, you want to avoid. Stimulating machines, or again, manual massage. A cooling massage device can be used in place of manual facial massage, 
which can be manipulated to be more gentle on the skin. So nowadays we do have the cold globes again to calm the skin. All right, so again, this chart is very, very helpful. And again, the treatment goal will be identify and avoid these stimuli that provoke a sensitive or sensitized or rosacea response. Provide skin with topical application of ingredients that help calm and soothe the appearance of the skin, such as seaweed, silver, okay, olive oil, olive leaf extract, calamine, calcium carbonate, green tea, and allantoin. Help maintain the skin's protective moisture barrier by using fatty acids, ceramides, hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, to name a few. Okay, so again, it's going over treatment goals at the bottom of page 332. On 333, it says treatments for sensitive and sensitized skin or rosacea. Follow the, follow the facial procedures and incorporate the following guidelines. To lessen the appearance of irritation, a gentle cleanser is the best type of cleanser. Detergent-based detergent -based cleanser, sorry, can strip the skin's lipids and barrier protection. And that's something you do not want to do, okay? Please put a star and highlight the following. Cold towels are vasoconstricting, which means they constrict capillaries and blood flow. An enzyme peel formulated for sensitive skin gently exfoliates the skin. A soothing cream or an alginate gel mask is great for calming and toning down the appearance of redness. Calamine and calcium carbonate powder mix with aloe or fresh yogurt are also excellent for sensitive skin. Freeze-dry collagen masks are also excellent for redness or sensitive skin. Lipids such as olive oil extracts and seaweed help to create a moisture barrier on the surface of the skin. Use a serum and moisturizer with hyaluronic acid or squalene to help soothe the symptoms of sensitive skin. Again, the use of these silver balls or cold um, globes may be used to calm blood flow and reduce redness. They provide a gentle massage with controlled pressure to help both massage skin and apply product. And these are, you know, they become really popular nowadays. Now let's talk about treatments for hyperpigmentation. So hyperpigmentation is a condition that affects many people. Sun exposure, medication, and chemical reaction cause dark pigmentation areas on the skin that clients often want to diminish. We want to get rid of them. Advise clients that the best preventative measure are to stay out of the sun. Again, I cannot stress that enough. You have to wear protective clothing and sun protection daily. The follow excuse me, follow the facial procedures and incorporate the following guidelines. Highlight and put a star next to the following. Ingredients that can help brighten the appearance of the skin include kojic acid, alpha arbutin, glycolic acid, mulberry, licorice root, azelic acid, bearberry, and citrus such as lemon work to help reduce the appearance of dark spots. Next page. These ingredients can be used in conjunction with exfoliating treatments using AHA, BHA, and other types of exfoliators. Harsh skin bleaching agents such as hydroquinone. Okay. Remember that over exfoliating can cause damage and make hyperpigmentation worse. Okay. Or conversely cause what is called hypopigmentation hypopigmentation results from reducing the appearance of melanin to the extent that lighter skin patches are now more evident, okay? Treatments for oily skin. Oily to combination skin is caused by overactive sebaceous glands and is thicker in texture. The skin has enlarged pores that may be filled with sebum, meaning oil, 
buildup from the environment as well as from the use of comedogenic makeup and other products. Comedones and whiteheads are present. The skin is sallow in appearance and it is more prone to blemishes, but it's less prone to wrinkles and fine lines because the oil acts as a lubricant and a barrier helping to keep moisture within the skin from evaporating. So I guess that would be one of the good things about having oily skin is the fact that you show signs of aging later on. So that is good. But then again, if you're too oily, then you are most likely to have acne. So the treatment goal for someone with oily skin, this type of skin can develop breakouts easily. So it is important to treat the skin with effective deep cleansing and purifying products. Galvanic current, steam, and extractions can benefit oily skin to keep the pores free of comedones. And exfoliation with oil controlling ingredients and BHA can lead to great results as well. All right. Describe acne facials. Skin with acne has many of the same characteristics as oily skin, but hormones, stress, and other biological factors can cause the formation of acne pustules. This is especially common in adolescents, but can manifest at any time in a person's life, particularly during premenopause. The first sign of acne are usually seen during puberty when there is an increase in the androgen hormones, which stimulates the amount of oil production by the sebaceous glands. Blackheads, whiteheads, pimples, and pustules are present and easily infected with bacteria. So the treatment goal for someone that has acne it's to eliminate blackheads, excuse me, yes, eliminate blackheads from the skin that lead to more breakouts. Thorough cleansers, deep cleansing masks that include AHA and BHAs are obviously recommended, and the facial treatment should include extractions. Extractions must be done gently and without pain to the client. Treatment care and client education regarding acne can be ongoing and the results are rewarding for the client and the esthetician. Clients that do suffer from acne need to understand, again, that it's not an overnight fix, okay? They have to get routine facials. They have to be in a skincare regimen that they're using at home and they have to be consistent. They also have to be very careful and watch what they eat. So acne treatment. So excessive oil and problem skin is one of the leading reasons clients seek professional help and is one of the most important factors in an esthetician's practice. While estheticians do not diagnose acne, they must be aware of this condition and know how to properly provide a facial. Performing consistent, effective facial treatments will not only benefit the client overall appearance, but will also help bolster their self-esteem. Both of these results are perhaps the most important achievements to which an esthetician can aspire. The esthetician can outline an acne treatment plan to balance the skin. Treatments are focused on deep cleansing and extractions. Clients need to understand that they did not get their acne overnight and it will not go away overnight. Likewise, clients should also look for indications of acne escorie, highlight and put a star next to that, a condition stemming from habitual nervous picking, okay, of the acne pimples that lead to more permanent scarring. You have to avoid doing that. In order to partner with the client on proper care of their skin condition, instruct them on the histology of acne within the skin. Provide simple illustrations on how acne pustules form such as in figure 853, which is on the next page, okay? 
Caution, physicians prescribe medications that work to suppress acne flare-ups. However, medication can have adverse side effects and even with medication, acne can actually return. Working with problem skin is a continuous process and clients need to follow regular skincare programs. I just mentioned that, okay? It has to be something that your clients have to commit to. They cannot expect you, okay, the professional, the esthetician to do all the work, okay? If you have put them on a regular skincare routine and they are not following instructions, and they're not doing what they are supposed to do at home, they will not see any results. Okay, so on page 336 at the top. So in this illustration, keratinized skin cell debris, plug A. So here's the sebaceous gland. Block sebum from wicking out, okay, along the hair shaft. Stagnant sebum, B, is broken down by bacterial enzymes into short chain fatty acids. An irritated papule, which is C, is then formed. Increased blood flow activates the immune system, D. Finally, white blood cells rush to the area to try to fight, okay, the foreign matter, resulting in infection which then forms pustules, which you see here on illustration E, okay? Products and equipment for acne care. So disincrustation, steam, and extractions are all part of an oily and problem skin facial. AHA and BHA exfoliation treatments are also effective. Each client is treated individually according to their needs. Here are some products recommended for acne. Again, we're on page 336. Beta hydroxy acid, salicylic acid. These products are found naturally in willow bark extracts and are natural keratolic agents, meaning they're able to dissolve keratin, improving the look and the feel of the skin. These ingredients differ from alpha hydroxy acids in that it is more soluble in oil than it is water. This means that once the water from the product you are applying evaporates, salicylic acid, okay, will seek out oil, in this case, sebum, and help to cleanse it further from the skin, okay? Make sure that you are checking for aspirin allergies before using salicylic acid. That's very important. So it could be something that you have on your questionnaire if to make sure that clients let you know if they are allergic to aspirin. Next will be sulfur mask. These are effective products that exfoliate skin and dry blemishes. You also want to make sure that you're checking for sulfur allergies. AHAs, we have glycolic, lactic, malic, citric, and tartric acid. These products are used in different percentages to help dissolve dead skin cells to keep the skin surface exfoliated. Exfoliation also softens acne impactions. Vitamin A or retinol. Both retinol and retinol Palmitate are forms of vitamin A. This topical vitamin benefits the skin by helping to reduce flaking and restore the appearance of skin's, the skin suppleness. In a spa or salon, formulations should never exceed 30% retinol and should never be lower than 3.5%. Top of page 337, put a star next to benzoyl peroxide. This ingredient releases oxygen that kills bacteria as well as helps exfoliate the skin. Then we have kojic acid. This is an ingredient derived from mushroom that helps to brighten the appearance of the skin. Spot blemish treatments. These products include ingredients such as beta hydroxy acids, tea tree oil, and benzoyl peroxide that are applied just on blemishes after cleansing. Lastly, we have increased vitamin C. 
This oral vitamin has antioxidant value and healing effects. Acne care tips. Here are some suggestions for clients with acne. Eliminate comedogenic products so oil-free does not mean non-comedogenic. Examine the ingredients on product labels to determine if they are appropriate for problem skin. Control oil through proper product usage. Do not irritate the skin with harsh products. Exfoliate the skin. Keep the skin clean and exfoliate it to keep sebum and cells from building up. Beta or alpha hydroxy acids are beneficial. Do not overuse these products. Once a day is sufficient. Protect against environmental aggressors, dirt, grease, UV light, humidity, and pollution. Practice stress reduction and good nutrition. Have regular facials once a month or as needed. Again, usually if someone is suffering from acne, then again, anywhere between three to four times a week would be a good idea to get routine facials. Obviously, you would want to get with your esthetician and ask what they would suggest. Home care for acne. Proper home care can usually help keep acne under control. However, when clients cannot achieve results with their home care routine, they may seek the aid of an esthetician or a physician. After the skin is analyzed, suggestions are given to the client specific to their skin needs. It is important for clients to follow the recommended home care routine as outlined by the esthetician. Treatments must be followed by a real commitment from the client to maintain their home care regimen, which is what I've been mentioning. It is important to ask clients not to pick at their blemishes. Explain to them that the skin is delicate and performing self-extractions will cause the infection to go deeper possibly spread more rapidly, and perhaps cause permanent scarring. You cannot treat infected skin. Advise the client to first see a dermatologist to medically treat the infection. Next page. Home care will include a cleanser, an exfoliant, a mask, a toner, a lightweight hydrator, and a full spectrum sun protection cream in addition. Make sure to recommend ingredients that are not irritating or contraindicating. A foaming or gel cleanser with an exfoliant, AHA, or salicylic acid or benzoyl peroxide will be a good choice. Use an astringent with alcohol to prevent infection. Apply a light, hydrating, oil-free moisturizer and sunscreen for balance and protection. A clay mask is recommended twice per week a mask with comfort and sulfur also works well for oily skin. Other products may include a hydrating, soothing mask to balance the drying products. All home care includes an analysis of lifestyle to help the client better understand what some of their acne triggers might be. By understanding the cause, the client is better prepared to follow a home care program. All right, extraction techniques. So practicing proper extraction methodology is one of the most important skills an esthetician must learn. Furthermore, each state in the United States have specific requirements for aesthetic training and subsequent licensing. And each state regulates the type of treatment and implements permissible by the state law. You must check with your individual state board to thoroughly understand the number of training hours and type of implements allowed in order for you to perform extractions as a licensed esthetician. Importance of infection control. Proper infection control is essential when performing extractions. And that is because we know that when we do perform extractions, a lot of times the clients may bleed, okay? And the process must be correctly executed before, during, and after each treatment. A sterilizer or autoclave completely kills all microorganisms, including bacteria, viruses, fungi, and bacterial spores with highly pressurized steam. Please highlight and put a star next to the following. All reusable implements should be placed in the autoclave between treatments. 
If you don't have a sterilizer or an autoclave, use only disposable implements and dispose of these after every use so there is no risk of cross-contamination. In addition, a high-frequency machine is useful and unique tool for acne-prone skin, helping prevent secondary lesions and decreasing the appearance of inflammation. Extraction training. In treating acne or blemished skin, the most important step for the esthetician is the effective cleansing and removal of blemishes. When the follicles are properly cleansed, the client's skin will begin to show marked improvement. It is important to explain to the client that you cannot always remove all blemishes during one treatment. Highlight and put a star next to the following. Training and caution are needed before performing extractions. The skin must be exfoliated and warmed before extractions are performed. It is also imperative that the esthetician wear gloves during extractions and then change the gloves before performing the rest of the facial to prevent the spread of infection. That is very important. Protective eyewear is also recommended in some instances. Proper extraction procedures are necessary to safely extract oil and debris from the follicles. Do not practice extractions without prior instructions or training. Gloves must be worn at all times. Extraction methods. So there are different methods. There are four methods to use for extractions. Four fingers wrapped with gauze, cotton swabs, comedone extractors, or a use of a lancet. For the first three methods, press gently around the lesion. Manual comedone removal, gauze wrapped around glove fingers, damped with astringent is useful for the majority of extractions. Comedone extractors are metal tools, just like shown here on page 339, used for open comedones and sebaceous filaments. Cotton swabs are smaller than fingertips and are especially useful around the nose area. Lancens are for the removal of milia or pustules, okay? To achieve optimum success when performing extractions, you must put pressure on the skin surrounding the follicular wall so that you can extract the impaction with the least amount of trauma to the surrounding tissue. Understanding the angle of the various follicles in the different locations on the skin will enable you to perform extractions easily and effectively. That's very important. And again, it takes practice, but it really does take training in order for you to perform extractions properly. Next, treatment for milia, which are considered closed comedones, okay? Now, as discussed in chapter four, diseases and disorders of the skin, milia are small epidermal cysts and are often referred to as tiny whiteheads. Milia usually occurs around the eyes, upper surface of the cheeks, and forehead. Your client may have tried to get them cleaned out themselves, but most of the time they are not very successful at it. Please put a star next to that. On page 440 at the top, but again, like I said, with no luck. This is because milia are keratinized sebum trapped under the surface of the skin. And although it looks like it can be extracted easily, you may need the help of a lancet to get the milia out. A lancet is a small, sharp, pointed needle used to make a tiny opening in the epidermis to expose the milia. Put a star next to that as well. Always use a new sterile sealed lancet. Be sure the seal has not been broken. Again, a lancet is only allowed with permission by the state board. Improper lancet use may scar the skin or may cause infection. Perform an acne treatment procedure. The following is a basic outline of the facial that incorporates deep cleansing, comedone extractions, and skin balancing treatment that will help oily problematic skin get back on track to a beautiful healthy complexion. Some steps may be omitted or rearranged depending on the treatment goal and the client's needs. Here is an example of some of the products you may need. Comedone extractors, cotton, cotton squares, cotton swabs, 
iPads, fresh linens, obviously trash can with the lid, gauze, gloves, hand cream, lancets, again, if allowed, makeup remover, mixing bowls, rope for the client, scissors, sharps container, sink or basin for water, spatula, and unscented tissue. And then it's going over all the different steps. For example, wash your hands and put on gloves, perform a deep cleansing, cleanse the skin using a soap-free formula The deep cleanses without dry, causing uh, extra drying, dryness, preferably one that contains salicylic to gently exfoliate the skin. Cleansers should also contain soothing ingredients such as seaweed and green, and, uh, green tea, white and rooibos tea. Step three will be to analyze the skin. Use a mag magnifying lamp to check for open pores, open and closed comedones, pustules, milia, or any redness or irritation. If the skin is irritated or sensitive, skip steaming. Steam and apply serum. Steam the face while applying a gentle skin serum that combines exfoliating ingredients such as an AHA or a BHA with softening ingredients such as seaweed and natural extracts that help calm the appearance of the skin, such as chamomile and lavender. This can be applied in a gentle effleurage movement. Step five, proceed with disincrustation. Soften the outermost layer of the skin before proceeding with extractions. So we will speak about disincrustation later on. This is because clients are often using dehydrating ingredients such as hydrogen peroxide on their skin at home to treat their acne pimples. The esthetician will almost likely will most likely find that while the skin is oily, the skin is extremely tight with a lot of dead skin cell accumu accumulation. Even the sebum inside the pore is dried out and dehydrated. You can injure the client's skin at this point if you are trying to extract a blackhead, also known as an open comedone, in this state. The disincrustation solution is the first step in softening the sebum in order to perform a gentle but thorough extraction. The syncrustation solution, just really fast, the syncrustation solution is used on areas where you are wanting to do extractions. And what it does is opens up the follicle, making extractions a lot easier, okay? Perform the actual extraction, step number six. The most important skill an esthetician must master is proper extractions. It must be performed in such a way as not to cause any further damage to the skin or make the acne worse, okay? So choose an extraction method that is, again, allowed by your state board to remove comedones. You can use comedone extractors, again, con swaps or a lancet for the removal of milia. Put pressure on the skin surrounding the follicular wall so that, they can, so that you can extract the impaction with the least amount of trauma surrounding the tissue. We mentioned that already. All right, step number eight, apply a stringent toner. Now that the extractions have been completed, saturate aesthetic wipes with astringent that contains a salicylic acid tea blend to soothe the skin. Apply astringent. Applying astringent is critical following extractions to help cleanse the skin, thereby reducing the possibility of secondary infections and to rehydrate the skin. Do not rub the astringent in, but apply it lightly, paying special attention to the areas where you extract it put a star next to that step eight apply a clay based mask for deep cleansing remove with towels follow with the clay based mask to help deep cleanse the pores while helping to make skin feel smooth look for a mask that contains sea mud zinc and kaolin to help promote surface desquamation and help remove excess oils and debris which may contribute to breakouts there may be some residual blood left on the skin from the extraction process. So continue wearing gloves and apply the mask with a spatula. Leave on for seven to 10 minutes and remove by applying warm, moist cotton or towels over the entire face. Letting the moisture soak in for a moment, then removing the mask using quick, gentle strokes. Remove any residue with astringent and aesthetics wipes. Remember that removing the mask is very important. So you wanna make sure you remove it thoroughly and you definitely wanna take your time. Apply a soothing mask, remove with wet cotton. Follow with the soothing mask, such as a 
calamine mass combined with tea extract, again, zinc, and organic buttermilk powder to help reduce the appearance of redness on the skin. Leave on for 10 minutes and perform a relaxing 10-minute hand massage. Your client will appreciate it after the extractions. After 10 minutes, remove the mask with a wet cotton and clean warm towels. Follow up with an astringent that helps tone the skin's appearance. Okay. Again, a note, a client should never leave the salon with red irritated skin after a facial treatment. Apply moisturizer. Step 10. After mask, we are ready for a moisturizer that does not clog skin while it helps to lessen the appearance of oil. Remember that the client was just deep cleansed and it is about to go into the environment. It is key for the client's skin to be moisturized upon completion of the facial treatment to further reduce dryness and the appearance of irritation. Use a mattifying moisturizer that is formulated with zinc as well as squalene, a moisturizing ingredient found in sebum as essential fatty acids to help restore moisture yet reduce oil and shine. I love squalene. Step 11, perform galvanic or high-frequency treatment. High-frequency germicidal rays can be applied to the skin for faster healing time of lesions and prevention of secondary infection. Contraindications to using high-frequency include pregnancy, high blood pressure, and or heart conditions, and patients with a high amount of metal in their mouth from dental procedures Place your index finger on the electrode and apply to the client's entire face in a circular motions, moving over the entire face for a total of three to five minutes. Remove the index finger when the electrode makes contact with the skin. You can also target specific areas by lifting the electrode on, the, on and off the skin. You may also incorporate this step right after extractions. Usually that's when I like to incorporate high frequency. Again, we will discuss high frequency a little later. And of course, I'll be showing you step by step what high frequency consists of and how to use in the treatment room. Again, the, this is just an example of an acne treatment. It doesn't mean that this is exactly how you will have to do an actual treatment, but again, it's just an example. Finish with a post-treatment consultation. Education and knowledge are key in helping clients with problems. Oily skin, the client should be advised of the importance of in-salon treatment and following a home care program, especially designed for them. Additional important points to cover will be break bad habits, okay? Such as picking their skin, picking their skin and squeezing the skin over cleansing can be detrimental to acne prone skin. It can further irritate the skin by stripping the, those oils that we actually need and causing inflammation. Maintain a healthy diet. Okay, that's very important. Avoid sunbathing and not just because of the damaging UV light. Once considered part of the acne treatment program, UV light can initially dry up excess sebum and reduce pustules, can, but can lead to a cascade of reactions that actually increase oil production and sebum buildup on the actual skin. That is a lot of information, you guys, but again, it is very important to know what some of these acne triggers may be. So having that initial consultation with your client, finding out a little bit about their lifestyle can actually help you figure out what the best treatment plan for them will be. All right, now let's talk about men's skincare, okay? Men's skincare options and treatments. As men now are spending more time and money than ever before on improving their appearance as they seek success in both their professional and social lives. Estheticians need to educate themselves on the key difference between male and female skin needs. A major skin complaint spa owners hear from their male clients is razor burn. Men tend to have sensitive skin that they have mistreated for years. The spa is the place to educate them on how to shave properly and protect their skin before and after shaving. Highlight and put a star next to the following. Traits of men's skin. Men often have larger pores and more active sebaceous glands. Their skin tends to be characterized by excess oil and numerous blackheads. 
At the same time, male skin often can become dehydrated from harsh soaps and shampoos, as well as from frequent hot showers. Ironically, their skin can both be excessively oil, oily and have surface dryness. Men need products and treatments that are hydrating, but also offer deep pore cleansing and pore refining as well. Men also are concerned with aging. They often have hyperpigmentation from years of outdoor activities without wearing sunscreen. They may have crow's feet and dark under eye circles from long days spent squinting at computer screens. The baby boomer male is being confronted with middle age. In addition, male millennials now moving into the 25 plus age group are coming into the workplace with a more evolved approach towards grooming where it's okay to care about the conditions of their skin that is absolutely true so focus on and some tips for men's treatment so avoid using perfume and fragrance products in the facial room men already may feel a bit you know apprehensive about having a facial so keep the service as clean and simple simplicity is key here as possible cater to specific needs by incorporating grooming services such as trimming or waxing eyebrows nostrils hairs and ear hair men do not want to walk out of a spa with red blotchy skin caused by an aggressive extraction session for example Additional services um, to calm the skin, apply products, and even concealing makeup should be considered. When deciding on a retail line for males, keep in mind the kinds of packaging that men may prefer. It should not be pink or red, but rather be more sleek and simple. Choose products that can be sprayed on quickly and swap jars for bottles with pumps perhaps, so they can be easily packed uh, in gym bags and for trips retail products should be merchandised to emphasize qualities such as non-greasy rinse off easily and protect the skin perfume free color free calming and stress reducing are good buzzwords to use when describing offering that will appeal to them okay i always suggest that having specific facials uh geared more for your male clients so i have one that's my gentleman's facial okay that way when you do get a male client they feel like they actually have a service designed specifically for them on your treatment uh, menu so that's something to think about so again marketing to men please highlight and put a star next to the following men's skincare needs are just as important as women it is becoming more common for men to use spa services and to take care of their skin Estheticians need to take a simple, direct approach when discussing skincare with their male clients. Men in general want to use only a few products on a daily basis. Male clients are willing to follow suggestions and want a basic, consistent routine. They tend to be loyal customers. Male clients represent a growing percentage of spas businesses. The challenge is to attract male clients so that they will make the initial visit in the first place. That is true. Once they have gotten their very first facial, I guarantee that they will definitely be coming back. One way to attract male clients is to offer special services designed just for them. Voila, there it is. I just mentioned that. Make them feel comfortable and tactfully assure them that it is normal for men to have spa services and practice good skincare habits. Conduct consultation privately without discussing product and treatments out in the open, like in a reception area where their other clients may be around. Some salon and spas cater to men only. The male market will continue to grow as men feel more comfortable about receiving services. In fact, there's a rising trend of barbershop services that provide skincare treatments after shaving. That is absolutely true. Men's skincare products. So, to build the market, a salon or spa should carry a specific line for men's skincare products. Most unisex products lines will work as just as work well as long as the packaging and fragrance are not overly feminine. Men typically have larger sebaceous glands and oilier skin. They also need sun protection. Men tend 
uh, may tend to neglect their skin care because it is not considered masculine or a priority. Clients who are especially pleased with visible treatment results are more willing to try a home maintenance program. When, considered, when considering a men's skincare line, keep in mind several key points. Be sure the products are basic and the routines are again simple. Men do not want highly fragranced feminine products. For instance, lotions need to be light, be without fragrance, be highly absorbent, and have a matte finish. Most men do not like that greasy feeling of some products. Men prefer simple routines and multi-purpose products. They would rather have a moisturizer that they can use day and night or one that is already contains full, uh, full spectrum sunscreen. They also like the foaminess of soap, so a foaming cleanser is a good choice. They can use a toner just like they would an aftershaving lotion. They should then apply a light moisturizer with sunscreen. Give male clients very specific instructions. Again, give male clients specific instructions, okay, on how and when to use the products. Keep the following tips in mind when working with male clients. Again, tubes and pumps are easy to open and more male friendly than jars are. His home care regimen should begin with only two products perhaps a cleanser and a hydrating lotion. If he wants a third one, just add sunscreen to it. As he grows accustomed to the regimen and sees results, he will most likely add to his regimen by purchasing maybe a toner, maybe even an eye cream and a mask. Educate him on sun protection and skin cancer facts, even if he chooses not to purchase the sunscreen. Estheticians can suggest that milk clients shave in a downward direction in the direction of the hair growth pattern because it is less irritating. Once he is accustomed to receiving treatment and using products, your milk client will be more likely to use an eye cream if he is taught how. While men may be conscious of lines and wrinkles around their eyes, they seldom request an eye product, okay? Estheticians can point out the benefits of these and other products as well. Professional treatment for men. Depending on the client's skin conditions, you can offer various treatments. Most men love steam and the brush machine. Even if the client is slightly sensitive, he will prefer the assertiveness of a brush and a foaming cleanser. A firmer touch and deeper massage are also needed on male skin. Put a star at the top of page 348 and highlight the following. There are some other important aspects of men's facial. First, sponges and towels are more appropriate for a, men, for a men's face. Cotton pads and gauze will grab the beard hair, leaving particles clinging onto the face. Shaving before a facial actually makes the skin more sensitive, so I will let them know that ahead of time. So on freshly shaven skin, exfoliating products or techniques, including strong sensitizing agents such as AHAs and microdermabrasions may be contraindicated. Professional movements during a men's facial should flow with the direction of the hair growth. So for example, most massage movements in the beard area should move downward and not upward. That of course goes against the typical aesthetic procedure of lifting movement up the neck and face. Overall, the beard area tends to be relatively sensitive due to shaving lotions that contain perfumes and alcohols or other similar substances. Shaving itself is also quite abrasive to the skin, so men need more calming and healing products. Folliculitis, highlight that. It is an inflammation of the hair follicles. This can be a problem for many men, especially if they have very coarse or curly beard hair. Folliculitis is an infection characterized by inflammation and pus. Improper shaving may also cause folliculitis barbae, where the hair grows slightly under the skin and it is trapped there causing a bacterial infection, causing an ingrown hair and they hurt, okay? The treatment goal for this condition is to alleviate the irritation, dry up, and disinfect the pustules and desensitize the area. A soothing gel mask is probably the most 
comfortable product for a male client to use in this area. That is true. I love using some sort of gel or seaweed mask, especially if men do have facial hair. Again, it is more soothing, it's calming, and it doesn't set. Um, see, again, a seaweed mask is going to stay moist throughout the entire time until you remove it. So it's one that I would really recommend. Next one, please put a star next to it. Soto folliculitis, also known as razor bumps, resembles folliculitis but without the infection. This condition also results from improper shaving techniques. There are products on the market for ingrown hairs that help exfoliate and keep the follicles clean. Exfoliating is necessary to keep the follicles open. A foaming cleanser will also help a men's beard area. Estheticians can help male clients by keeping them informed of how to take care of their skin on a regular basis. Wow, this chapter was awesome. I know you guys will find this information helpful. It was quite long, but I hope you made it to the very end. Please do not forget about the procedures shown, and they start on page 349. And it has a lot of very awesome detailed procedures on how to remove products, how to apply products, everything step by step. This book is amazing. Again, this is the latest 2020 Esthetician My Lady book. And it's from page 349 to 382. And again, we have a few terms in our glossary. All right, you guys. So this concludes chapter eight facial treatments thank you so much for watching and as always if you found this video helpful don't forget to like and subscribe i'll see you guys on the next one bye